So before we go into lag control design, we have to do some definitions. We're going to look at system type, steady state error, look at the responses to three different input functions, and then define this idea of an error constant. Once we have all that built, uh, we're going to put it all in a nice matrix that's going to give us intuition as to what we need for, uh, for controls. So we've done transfer functions. We've done it in a couple different forms. Uh, one is polynomials. Those are a nice way to uh, display a transfer function. If you have a polynomial, you can always factor it. That's a popular form right here in the, the zero pole gain format where you have all the factors easily laid out. We're going to use a slightly different form where we pull out all the Z1, Z2, and so on. We pull out all the P1, P2, and so on. We factor those guys out. Um, and then what's left over is here. So if we pull out a Z1, we're going to have something in front of the S now. So that's just 1 over Z1. We pull out Z2, we're going to have TZ2, which is 1 over Z2, and so on. These are time constants. Same thing in the denominator. We're going to pull out all the P's. So we'll be left with a 1 here. And then we're going to have TP1, which is 1 over P1, and so on. So instead of K now, we have this thing called K hat. And K hat is simply defined as the product of the original K and then times all the different Z's we pulled out divided by all the different P's we pulled out. So the idea is this K hat is going to be a a thing we're going to want to do something with. We're either going to want to make it big or we want to make it small. So by defining it with all these products, we'll realize what goes into k hat, right? It's the baseline k here, or maybe our control gain k, and then the actual zeros and poles that we choose. So we're going to use final value theorem, and in Laplace, final value theorem, you take s and you set s equal to zero. The nice thing about this form is when I put s equal to zero, all these things go away, right? S equals zero, S equals zero, S equals zero, and so on. So all I'm left with is one times one times one times one. Same in the denominator, one times one times one times one, and I'm left with k hat. So that's kind of where we're heading. So let's now add n free integrators, or free s's, in the denominator. So everything else up to this point is the same. But now I also have these free S's, or S's at the origin. Open loop poles at the origin. Again, G is our baseline system. So we have capital N is the number of free S's. And the order, right, this still has uh, N factors. So the order of the whole denominator now is capital N plus little n. So system type is simply going to be defined as the value of this capital N. If that N is zero, then there's no free S. It's a type zero system. If capital N is one, then there's one free S. It's a type one system. If capital N is two, there's two free S's and it's a type two system. So, and again, this applies to G, only G, the baseline system. Um, and we have a system shown here with closed loop with negative unity feedback but the system type is only reference to G and how many free S's are in this transfer function G, not the closed loop transfer function. So let's talk about steady state error. So the steady state response of a system is the portion of the response that when all the transients have died out. So a lot of time has gone by, all the oscillations and whatever have dampened out and you're left with it pretty much a steady value. So we want the system to track an input R, and so we want this output to, to eventually equal R, or get as close to R as we can. And if there's error, residual error, then we call that tracking error. But the whole system overall, how it, how it tracks, really depends on what the input is. The input could be either a step, or a ramp, or a parabola, or something else. So some systems are better at tracking steps, other systems are better at tracking ramps. So we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So what is error? Error 
we really want to compare the input to the output. Well, we have that built into our dot block diagram here, this, this E, right? The output is C, and the input is R, and E is the difference of the two, right? R minus C, just straight off the block diagram. So that's our equation for error. Let's take this equation and divide left side and right side by the input R. So E over R equals, everything gets divided by R, right? R over R, C over R. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to basically get to this one minus what's left over, and that happens to be the closed loop transfer function. So that's good. So our error, which was divided by the input, is one minus the closed loop transfer function. Let's keep this logic going. All right, we have a given system over here. We know what the closed loop transfer function of that system is. So we have one minus, this is the closed loop transfer function for this system shown here. Okay, let's get common denominators and complete the math. So this one needs to get the same denominator as this one. So we do that, one plus g minus the original one, all now over the same common denominator. Well, that's nice. These g's uh, cancel each other out. Well, all we're left with now is 1 over 1 plus the original baseline system. So, and this was E divided by R. Well, let's bring this R back over to the right-hand side. So we're going to bring this R back over to the right-hand side here. When we do that, we have now an equation in Laplace for the error. It's just 1 over 1 plus G of S and then times R. So let's now apply the final value theorem. This was defined in, in the Laplace lecture, but it's basically the steady state error over time is the limit of the time function as time goes to infinity, but we like in Laplace, it's the limit as s goes to zero of s times the error function, and that s is, a lot of times people forget that s, but that's how it's defined in Laplace for final value theorem. So it's s times the error function. Let's plug in our equation that we just calculated up here for, for E. So that's shown here. So we take the limit as S goes to zero of S times whatever the input is, and then we still have the one, one plus G of S in the denominator. So input is key. We've got to figure out what the input is. Here's the three inputs we're going to look at in this course. The unit step, the ramp, and the parabolic. Here's the associated time functions that represent uh, these inputs. And here's the corollary Laplace function for the inputs. So a, a unit step in Laplace is 1 over s. The ramp is 1 over s squared. The parabolic is 1 over s cubed. Here's the time domain representation of what this input looks like. The red, and here's a red step input. So it's the unit step in this case is 1 over all time. And here's an output function that has, you can see over, over the long haul, once the transients have died out, there is a residual steady state error. Here's a ramp input, just straight up ramp input. Here's how the, the system follows that. And again, there's some steady state error. Here's a parabolic input, and here's how the system follows that. So steady state error is just this vertical distance at some time slice, you just take the value there and, and subtract the two, and that's the steady state error. Next, we're going to define these things called error constants. Think of this in terms of a mechanical system that if the output is position, then the derivative or rate of change of the output would be velocity. Second derivative would be acceleration. So the first error constant we're going to define is Kp, the position error constant. And this is going to help us for unit step inputs, okay? Here's our definition of the final value theorem. We, we just calculated s over 1 plus g. We put in the specific input for r of s for the step is 1 over s. Well, guess what? This s cancels with this s, so that's good. Now we just have to run s equals to 0. We have 1, 1, and then whatever our baseline transfer function is, we have to put, evaluate that guy at s equals 0. So I'm going to define the position error constant to be the limit as s goes to 0 of our baseline transfer function. Basically it's just g of 0. This is where kp 
is defined. So I can rewrite now the steady state error as 1 over 1 plus Kp, because I just defined Kp as that limit, which is really g is 0. And again, this is only for a unit step. Okay, now let's look at what happens with respect to system type. A type 0 system with a unit step input, type 0 means g has no free s's. So when I plug in uh, the limit here of this function as s goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, and so on. So all I'm left with is 1's in the numerator plus k hat stays alive. And then all these go away when s goes to 0. So I just have 1 in the denominator. So the value of the function g as s goes to 0 for a type 0 system is simply k hat. It's the only thing that survived. Let's go to a type 1 system. Type 1 means I have 1s, 1 free s in the denominator. Now, when I apply my kp definition and take the limit as s goes to 0, again, all these guys to go to 0 and I'm left with 1s. All these guys go to 0 and I'm left with 1s. I got k hat still left over, but now I have this s in the denominator. So guess what? When that goes to 0, the function blows up and goes to infinity. Okay, so kp equals infinity. That may or may not be good or bad. We'll see here in a second. And as you can guess, for type 2 systems and higher, where we're still going to have some free s's left over in the denominator, when those s's go to 0, they also are going to result in the function going to infinity. So let's summarize. Type 0 system, the steady state error was 1 over 1 plus k hat because kp was k hat for the type 0 system. For the type 2 system, it was 1 over 1 plus infinity. So we got 0 for steady state error. So here, something going to infinity helped us. That error constant kp going to infinity made the steady state error 0. And the same for type 2 and higher. All those steady states errors will be 0. Alright, the next error constant. We got three of these. We have kp, kv, and ka. Position, velocity, acceleration. So this one's the velocity one. And this is, helps us now for ramp inputs. Apply the same definition we use for error, steady state error. Here's our R of S input. For a ramp input, now it's 1 over S squared. So we got some stuff left over. We run the math here. We still have an S in the denominator because this one canceled out, but we still have one left over. So this S shows up. So I'm going to define my velocity error constant, kv, as the limit as s goes to 0 of this denominator, right? Bottom line is now I can replace uh, for my equation ESS is just 1 over kv. Okay, T same thing we're going to do, type 0 system. s times, sorry, confused myself, s times g is s times, this is g now, and it's type 0 so it has no free s's, but we do have, since we have s times g, that was our velocity error constant, um, we do have this s here now. Take the limit as s goes to 0, all this stuff's going to go to 1's, the k hat's going to live, these are all going to go to 1's, but now we have this guy going to 0, so guess what? That kv equals 0. Okay, type 1 system with a ramp input, type 1 systems mean we have 1s, free s in the denominator, s times g of s is, so these s's are going to cancel, uh, k hat's going to live, all these guys are going to go to zero, we'll have one's left over, one's left over, the bottom line is it's going to be k hat for a type 1 system with a ramp input. Type 2 systems and higher with a ramp input, we're going to get a free uh, s left over, once this s cancels we'll still have some s's left over in the denominator, guess what, when s goes to zero, uh, and this function is going to go to infinity, and there we have it. So for a ramp input, the type 0 system, the steady state error was 1 over kv. In this case, kv was 0 for type 0, so that's bad. It's infinite steady state error is bad. Type 1 system, we had 1 over k hat, that's finite. Type 2 systems and higher, we get 1 over infinity, 0 steady state error, that's good. Last error constant, Ka, acceleration. 
This time it's for the parabolic input. Everything stays the same. R of S changes.